I think you should buy um, my Yo-Yo Dine stock. And I think that Facebook stock is a better store of value than the U.S. dollar. And if I think that, uh, you know, Sailor Moon coin is, uh, is really good or Sailor Moon 2 coin, because there's not just one coin, right? There's multiple Sailor Moon coins, you know, or Son of Sheba dog coin is whatever. Now, the issue really is, is it property? People say the maximalists say there's only one thing. L let me give you a more nuanced view. <clears throat> It's not that I think that it's impossible to create another property token. It's possible. For example, if you took a fork of Bitcoin, if the Chinese government forked Bitcoin and they created China coin and they said it's only legal to mine, to mine China coin in China and you can custody China coin, you can sell and trade China coin and you can mine China coin and they started with a fork of Bitcoin. They would have basically created a sovereign form of property. If the Canadian government said uh, you can mine, uh, you can use the same Bitcoin protocol or something comparable to the Bitcoin protocol, and they said you can mine can Canada coin in, in Canada, then you could imagine, like, if you're a Canadian investor, you might want to own that. Like, just like uh, if you're in Canada, land in Canada is property. You see, I, I don't want to own it. Because I, I, I don't want to live in Canada and I don't want to own Chinese land, but land in China and land in Canada are property. Bitcoin is global property. If I'm a global investor, I want to own the global thing because that's the strongest network effect because a guy in Tokyo or London or Paris might want to buy my Bitcoin for me. But you can create a crypto property network by making it legal tender or by giving it a tax advantage or by say just simply saying it's illegal to mine anything other than Canada coin in Canada and Canadian banks can handle Canada coin and Canadian banks cannot handle anything else or or maybe they can handle Bitcoin and Canada coin. You've got two forms of property. Just look, silver and gold are property. There could be multiple forms of property, but here's where you go awry. <laughs> If I start a company and I, and I issue half the tokens to my friends and family and I control the protocol and then I sell 10% of the tokens to the public. And if I have the ability to change the monetary policy, I, I have to disclose to the public who it is that controls the policies. What, what if I were to sell you, you know, like if I sold a million shares of MicroStrategy and then like, and then like two years later, you found out that it actually had 100 million more shares. I didn't tell you about, right? Something like that, right? It's, it's a problem. The thing that's powerful about Bitcoin, which makes it a solution to a 250 to $500 trillion problem, is we have perfected a crypto property, at least one, in cyberspace. And the monetary policy of Bitcoin is pretty much set in stone on Pizza Day. If you roll the clock back to May 22nd, 2010, you know, it was like, we're going to issue this much Bitcoin between now and 2140, and they're going to run off of transaction fees for the next thousand years. And if you were to say to me, Mike, what's the, what is the monetary policy and how's the network going to work for the next thousand years? I can credibly describe it. And if you said, do you think it's going to change? No. With good faith. <laughs> I can say to you, I think I know the monetary policy. I don't think anybody can change it. I can't change it. I have no intention to change it. And so that's what makes it useful for $500 trillion worth of companies, insurance companies, governments, banks to use this as what? As a, as a foundation for a balance sheet. It's like, uh, I want to build New York. I'm going to want to build New York on uh, granite or schist. New York's built on schist. It's a very heavy stone. Now, is it easy to move? No. Is it high speed? No. What's it do? It just lays there. Does it need to do anything? No. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. You want something with durability, integrity, predictability. You want the heavy, if Ma Manhattan happens to be a very heavy rock. Now, we did a lot of stuff on top of it, right? We built, you know, the buildings are like platforms. They're like exchanges, right? And then 
the companies are securities. We built things, we traded things. You know, there's been more than one country that controlled Manhattan. You know, there's been different currencies. There's probably been who knows how many currencies traded in Manhattan. Stuff comes and it goes. But the foundation of Manhattan, which is property, property, what you want it to be is heavy, heavy and durable. So I, when you look at everything else, I would just say, yeah, they're, they're all interesting, but they're competing. If, if, if they're competing as non-compliant tokens, then they're going to work in the gray market. And will they be able to become compliant? And what does it mean to be compliant? Will, will you be able to trade these tokens for the next 10 years? And will you have to make a disclosure? And what's the disclosure? And what will the SEC say? And I don't know, right? It's like that is venture capital and it's speculation. And if you see the world as crypto only, then you live in that world. But you got to keep in mind that Fortnite can issue tokens and Activision can issue tokens. So you're competing against Facebook and Microsoft and Google and Apple. And you're like, well, why aren't they in the market right now? Well, because certain things are non-compliant and they're illegal. That's why they're not in the market right now. Right. Be, that's why they're not. And why what you have is you have a, an industry crossing the chasm. The first decade was offshore entrepreneurial Wild West. And then the next decade is onshore institutional. And we're in the middle and we're going to be in the middle for three to five years. <clears throat> and, and what do you have? You have like Tether, like it's an offshore entrepreneurial successful company. Does the world need it? Yeah, the world needs it. If you're in Turkey or Argentina and you need dollars and your choice is lose your dollars in the bank or whatever, you need it, right? Will Apple or Microsoft use it? No, right? So will they become public and get registered in the U.S.? You know, will, will it be small companies in the U.S. that grow to be big companies like Silvergate Bank? Will it be offshore entrepreneurs that come onshore? Or will it be JP Morgan, Bank of America, will they, or Goldman Sachs, will they back into this business? The truth is nobody knows, right? My, my best bet would be if I had to forecast, I would say that there'll always be some gray market offshore. There's something, but, um, I don't, I don't think the massive growth is there. The hundred trillion dollar opportunity is is to provide the foundation for the mega for the 500 trillion dollars worth of capital in western europe and the united states if you can be half of that or a third of that right that's a mega opportunity right do you want to know one thing about crypto i made over three thousand percent in profit in a few weeks fact is the traditional financial system the traditional money system makes you poor not rich if you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges, but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? 
Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.